Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Rockham Sakura, and welcome back to The Shit Soup. Today we have a very special episode. We are joined by my sister. Hello. Oh, you probably couldn't recognize me with these gorgeous glasses. It's Crystal Method. Yay! Welcome to The Shit Soup, the review show where our reviews don't really matter and it's completely stupid. Remember, I went home second on Drag Race and Crystal- And I got that. second. Yeah, she did, but she didn't win the season. So take our <laughs> opinions with a grain of salt. We're just here to have some fun and we'll be reviewing Drag Race season 16. Sweet 16, baby. Crystal, I haven't seen you in, I haven't seen you in person in a while. I know, I've just been on a bus sleeping in a coffin. Oh, that's right, you're doing the Christmas tour. Mm -hmm. okay. Ho, ho, ho. How is that going? Um, it was so fun, you know, me just reading Alyssa Edwards down for Phil. Yeah. Um, Are you sad that you don't have to do your Christmas number over and over and over and over again? You know what? I'm actually a little sad. I liked being a slutty snowman. And, um, you know, I got to hang out with Heidi and Jimbo and Sasha Colby and like all oh, the girls. How was it so. like working with Sasha? Um, it was so, so fun. She also likes to do the same kind of drugs I do. <laughs> So we're on episode two of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race. It's been four years since we've been on TV, Crystal. Okay, who was four years before us? That was season eight, that was Bob winning. Oh my god! It's another political year. How do you feel about this season? I'm kind of intrigued. I know Q, so I'm, I already am rooting for my Missouri girl, but other than that, um, I'm excited to kind of see what happens because I don't really know. I know, this anything. is the one season where I didn't spoil myself on Reddit. Episode one, you're already rooting for Q? Is yeah. there anyone else that you favor from the whole cast? Oh, from the whole cast. Are we just talking about, oh, whole cast. Um, oh, oh, um. What does she look like? She was the banana. Oh, Nymphia. Uh huh. Nymphia Wind. Oh, I love Nymphia too. Nymphia is like a, a, like a favorite of mine. I've been following Nymphia for so long. I bet you have too. Uh huh. Her, Instagram is so well curated. She's pretty and she's funny and she has good taste. I, Asian people, we could do it this year. Okay, yeah, very much front runner energy right now. I was thinking about the first episode mm -hmm. and how they kind of like started off with a split episode. They kind of like- Was that triggering? A little you? bit, a little bit, kind of. How did you feel like when you first walked into the workroom and then we had a split season? I was in the first episode. So I, I felt like it was more of a surprise because like, the second one, you guys are coming in and our stuff is there. Yeah. So it's kind of like already spoiling it, but I didn't mind it. I think I was a little worried about it's more likely you're gonna go home. Oh, yes, yeah, same. You guys at home have to realize that for us, there hadn't been a split season since season six. And on those split premieres, people went home on them. So in the last few years, they've oh been doing- Oh my gosh, how dramatic. They've been doing split seasons for the last few years and then no one's gone home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I was kind of like, I hope someone goes home this episode last time. Okay, so before we get into the episode today, guys, please make sure to like this video, comment down below, who is your favorite from this episode? And of course, make sure to subscribe to this page if you want to see more of the shit soup and more content just like this. All right, so we start the episode. Hershey comes out. Hershey liqueur jeté. Hershey liqueur jeté. She is related to cornbread, right? Yes. And she talks about it later, but she has kids. She has two kids and she adopted them out of the goodness of her heart. I feel like I might be a total monster with because you wouldn't do it, right? <laughs> not that I wouldn't do it. Would you not? Would you I do mean, it? If maybe I'm ready to be a mother. Someone, um, if someone called you right now, and they're like, "I'm dying. I have two kids. Like someone that you loved." Well, will you take care of them. Do they have their passports? No. Because I'm gonna be, you know, I'm I'm flying a lot. I'm gonna be traveling a lot. If they can be like underneath the sea or yeah, maybe under the plane. If they could do the assistant role, then I can pay for. Oh, stuff. can they dress me? <laughs> Are they good at running an Instagram? Yeah. Okay, do the perfect. How big are their hands? Can they hold a zipper? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll teach them how to sew. It'll be sickening. Okay, yes. Uh, we're not giving you children. Take, give me the kids. <laughs> we're not giving, no, keep them away. So any initial inklings about Hershey's styling? I loved the hair, the little tips of the purple. Like that's very my color story mm -hmm. right now. Not 
this moment, yeah. um, but in my life. And I just think that the outfit was a leotard with a cape and that the cape should have had the print on it. It also wasn't lined. So yeah. it was just the back of the fabric. So it's just uh -huh. like, just if it was like back. a really fun and then maybe throw in like a lavender or something, yeah. something like to bring to in tie the hair. The hair. Yeah. Sickening. Yeah. I just felt disconnected right here, you know? Okay. Next up is plasma. The minute I saw her, I go, is she from New York and Broadway? And then she talked for one second and I knew that she was New York and Broadway. <laughs> I think that like what the garment is, it's like good at doing what it was supposed to be, but I don't necessarily gain any spark of joy from, or like from it. I'm curious as to why she came just in like a, a young 24 year old wants to look 70. It's all, I, you know what? There is an odd But you know what? I like to dress old too. Look, this is very modest. You look like that old lady with all the tattoos. Judy Jetson Hooker, yeah. Judy Jetson Hooker. <laughs> Oh, so you're saying I look like a Judy Jetson hooker. For um, me, yeah, I, I think that Plasma think? looked like the guy that Ariana Grande cheated on her boyfriend with. The guy who's in Spongebob. Uh. <laughs> That's literally all I can think of is that she looks just like him. Our next girl um, is Geneva Carr and she comes in um, in a Mexican flag ensemble. What do you think about... Um, Mexico, I love it. We're so close to it. Oh my God. There was a girl on TikTok. She said that gentrification is happening in Mexico City and she can tell because the salsas are getting less oh, spicy. Oh no! I feel like the corset on top is extra weird because it makes her wider a little bit. I will say it's placed really nice because if she has the outfit and then a corset and it mm. lines up really well, then that's well placed. I just yeah, throw a little petticoat or something. Yeah, it needed something like that. Cause yeah, it was it gave more like wrestling belt. Well, what do you think about her name, Geneva Car? Geneva Car, Geneva the Vroom Vroom Car. Geneva the Vroom Vroom Car. Um, I like it, and I hope that she fulfills her namesake and gets that car. Another girl's like Geneva Car, and then it's like <laughs> Geneva Car, and then you know what I mean? Like that, the, the thought process behind that is wild. So our next one is Plain Jane. Oh, Plain Jane. So everyone has thoughts and opinions on Plain Jane. The first thing I want to know before we get into any of this is her entrance outfit. Do you like it? Um, I like the proportions and the body. Yeah. And you know, I love an animal print. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she looks, I think she looks pretty polished when like, she walks uh, in. Yeah, su yeah. Super. The silhouette is silhouetting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the she, hair. Yeah, the, the hair. The hairline. The hair was pussy. She got herself together. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Now we can talk about everything else. So she goes into <laughs> the workroom and she's like, I'm the real Russian doll. Trixie and Katya fans explode everywhere. Okay, at home. first of all, I don't think your first introduction should be "I hate Katya," because at least start with Trixie. There's gonna be <laughs> a lot of people there to just already go in instantly. She came in pretty aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. If I had been there, I would have been completely intimidated by that. I would have been so nervous about that that someone was like so mean like that. You know what though? The mental mind games. I it would get me too. That I mean, I was. Nervous. I guess they want you know, to win it. It got this year. me the first time, but maybe, maybe I've learned my lesson. But like this kind of tactic, her walking in and like having all that confidence is is very tactical. She's very tactical. So also too, she says something in authentic Russian. Um, she said, "You look like a piglet. You're hideous, and you look beautiful." Her saying that and like having that there, she is. She's already planning on just being the villain of the season. Uh -huh. And she's really playing into it. How do you feel about that? Because, uh, you know. Because I know someone that was a villain. Yeah, is that what you're yes, saying? That's is what that, I was trying, gonna are you trying to yes. hint at that? Betty, I think, had the same kind of idea. I don't but, think she's anywhere near as But no, 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 no. I don't think it was like that much so. I just say be yourself. But what if yourself what is a completely say. rotted kind but, of like plain Jane? Well then, better people find out now than at the meet and greet. True. You know? True, 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 true. Another thing she says, she walks into the room and then she says, oh, I guess this is the Brick Squad. Oh, she says the Brick Squad. The, 
Okay, first off, she's calling everyone else here a brick. Um, is it justified? The call is coming from inside the house. Because if she, if that's <laughs> the brick squad, then you're the brick that killed someone at Stonewall. It's it's the personality that's a brick. You know what? When you've got a brick in the heart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Up next into the workroom is Megami. I like the appliques. Of course, we want them to go all the way down. Sometimes it can't happen. At least, at <laughs> Sometimes least, they run out of a budget. You know what? Sometimes it runs out and she's, at least she put one down at the bottom and be like, hey, what if it went all the way down? Okay, how would I fix it in 60 seconds? Hair, just make it go up higher. Add two more crowns. It felt like the decadence was And then maybe here. make the black, the bottom black or something. So it's not as like eye catching. So we're looking at the patch or, you know, I don't know. No, no, I, I definitely feel you. Like if it's black, then we focus on kind of like the individual things that are on there. Uh -huh. Yeah, I get that. She's also a cosplay queen. Cosplay, okay, that's what I'm excited for. Yes. Because I love the cosplay aspect. I just didn't see it in the entrance look, but I think we see it later on in the runway. So. I think it is interesting that she would come in, and label herself as a cosplay queen. And her name is Megami, which is from the video game series Shin Megami Tensei. Oh, not like origami? <gasps> no, not like origami. Oh. So just for you guys, <laughs> for if you like, if you play video games and you like Persona, the game that Persona is based off of is Shin Megami Tensei, and that's where her name comes from because it's her favorite Sick game thing. franchise. I want to do cosplay. Who would you cosplay as? I was just thinking about this because I, I, I want to go with you because it'd be so yeah, fun. Yeah, you want to go? And I was thinking, what look would I want to do? And I was like, maybe like a dark magician moment. I wanted, I've been wanting to do like Dark Magician Girl. We should go as a pair. Sick name. Let's go. Actually, that would be fucking pussy. <laughs> um, Widow did uh, for our reveal, she did a look that was inspired by Dark Magician. Our cast was just full of fucking nerds. Absolutely. The worst weeaboos. And Nikki Doll. Yeah. Oh, and Nikki Doll. Jackie's in there. She's all different kinds of. Well, Nikki Doll was like a Final Fantasy girl at the reveal. Oh, yeah. Uh, I referenced uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I mean, mine still. was Jack and Daxter. <laughs> was it Jack and Daxter? Two. Yeah. Was it really? Uh -huh. When we got back from Drag Race, I didn't have a job and I played every Jack and Daxter game. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. And now that you say it, I see the influence with the ears and the extra earrings mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Next up is the Queen of Flips. We have Maya coming out next. And she, the one word, orange. Oh my gosh, look how orange she fucking looked. The outfit was all orange hair, orange, everything orange. And I wanted like, look at me. I want, I wanted like a sprinkle of like another color. I don't know. We're in the season, we're in the season of girls that like to color block singular colors. We have Safira, we got her, we got mm. Nymphia, and then- But you know what, if it's all, it works. It, it does work, you know? Something about the tone of the orange just didn't register a shape. Well, maybe it's cause like the curtains like pink, you know, you're kind of- So you're saying that like, if she had not been in the workroom, had not been in front of the camera, had not been in front of those curtains, then she would have looked yes, great. Yes, would have been really good. Yeah, okay. Well, of the entrance looks, I mean, maybe it would be like my, Second or third? Because after, after her is Nymphia. Yeah. Up next, we have Queen of Yellow. It's Nymphia Wind. And I loved it. Yeah, the entrance was so weird and strange. I was a little like, banana. Banana. Like, that's it. I was like a little like, banana. Maybe, yes. it, maybe it's funny in Taiwanese. Uh -huh. Taiwanese? Is it Thai? Or do they speak Chinese in Taiwan? I don't know. Maybe it's just funnier in New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that her entrance was really good. And I thought that her, one, her makeup was really good and her concept head to toe was really nice. That's an entrance look. Yeah, it was like one color. Yeah. But I wasn't bothered. Yeah, because it was conceptual. Yeah. Here in the States, like if you call an Asian person a banana, it's like basically saying like you're whitewashed. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that's going to come into play later or if someone's going to tell her that. Cause like- I don't like, think Rue's going to know. You're right. Picture this. It's a Monday morning. You've been waiting since 10 AM and you get inside the CMV and TS Madison is there at the front <laughs> desk. How do you feel about this photo challenge? Um, I think that this one is way more fun than the doorbell challenge 
Because there's people there. Because RuPaul's right there. And it's easier to know if someone's laughing, if it's like happening directly in front of you. Yeah. Than if it's just a sound from the gods. Love Connie was there too, right? She, no, well, she was just there to get the cameras warmed up and then she had to go take her lunch break. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, but then don't worry because Ru popped in. Woo! Oh my gosh, she came up from yeah. the bottom and I was wondering like, I don't know if RuPaul can still use her knees. Like that's, you know, I've never seen her bend over. Oh, no, no, no. Because what I want to see is when they're like, okay, cut all the girls, turn around. Turn around, turn close around. your eyes. No one look. And they're like, okay, turn around. Everything was normal. Yeah, And yeah. then Ru pops up. <laughs> one thing that Drag Race has taught me is that I love T.S. Madison <laughs> on this show specifically. Like she has so yeah. much room to shine here and pairing her with Rue, Absolutely bonkers. No, yeah, really good. Some stands out, maybe Nymphia. Yeah. I think maybe Hershey. Oh yeah, yeah. Seemed like she was pretty like casual and like they banned her. Wait, didn't, didn't, wasn't she the one that got thrown off for RuPaul? Well, she like... got thrown off. She was so good at first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then RuPaul's like, I swear to God, I'm going to kill your firstborn child. And she's like, what'd you say? Um, I also liked, uh, Maya's the queen of flips because she was just sleeping before everything and you were saying like no she literally goes from sleeping to getting up not saying a single word and then just flipping all around she woke up and then she said all right time to shake my ass yeah I love that she she's clocked right in my favorite part of that scene is where T.S. Madison is like I I'm gonna look her up on OnlyFans uh -huh. and she has the really really long nails during this interaction where they're all like de-dragging and talking and meeting together for the first time, it really solidifies that plain Jane, not just in the confessionals, is very rude. And it's almost like it's not in a catty dressing room way. It's like a dig to get you to feel hurt. That's honestly what I feel. I don't send her death threats or anything like that because that's not conduct that's not conducive to anything. But like if you have that rotted personality, you gotta fix it because uh, well, after TV, because it's a good TV now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, we need to have villains, a gutted, rotted person on there because... That's representation of the gay community. Yes, and when they make it to the top and have to lip sync against another girl that we like... Oh, then, then it's better storyline-wise. Everything is a strategy in life. We're all born naked and the rest <laughs> is strategy. I also uh, catch a little bit of the conversation and we get that Megami is a Disney gay. Did you get that right away? Because I got that right away. You got that Megami was a Disney gay? Yes, the minute she talked and the minute I saw her in confessionals, I go, that's a Disney gay. What crosses you over to like? Okay, so the Disney, I feel like the peak pinnacle of Disney gay is like you go every year to Disneyland, you take a picture at the castle or something like that. You have proposed at Disneyland, uh -huh. your anniversary is at Disneyland. And then when you go home, your your uh, napkin holders say like um, Minnie, Mickey's, you know what I mean? Mm. And you have that whole theming throughout your whole entire life. And then whenever people talk about fierce queens, they go, oh yeah, but Ursula was the fiercest queen of all. That is top tier Disney gay and you scare me. Now that everyone's done de-dragging, it's time for RuPaul to come back into the workroom. She gives us the rundown of the season and the first challenge. First off, our first challenge, we have MTV, the Queen Choice Awards. Hell yeah. Like Teen Choice Awards. Okay, but what if they slime, no one went home, but they slimed the bottom girls or something <gasps> like that. Yes! That would be oh my cool. God, that would be great! We gotta go back in like, time. Like shame them, or the winner gets to pick which girl gets slimed. We also get a rundown of the season. Rue says that today, she's not going to be placing anyone in the tops or bottoms. She's not gonna be judging. In fact, the queens are going to be Raging each other. <gasps> we're gonna be judging each other. Like they've done it already, but now we're gonna get it on camera in concrete, like top to bottom. <laughs> Do you like this concept? Uh, I like the Ray to Queen system. I think it's fun to judge each other. Yeah. It's fun because we're gonna expose it and find out who's gonna fight yes. next week. I feel like the Ray to Queen is really good for at least now because we need to switch something up. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Raid of Queen's only going to be for this first episode, or do you think it's going to come back every episode? I think that it's only for this episode to cause the drama, because that's what happened on our season. Yeah. Well, uh, another thing, too, is with this whole concept, you have to play a, a more, more, more of a different game. 
Mm-hmm. Now it is RuPaul's best friend race, but also like survivor, backstabbing, all that stuff. Because when we see this first come out, Plain Jane's like, I'm gonna play so fair. I'm gonna vote for who's best. Now it's the next day in the workroom. The girls walk in. It's time to get ready for the challenge. And the New York girls are New York <laughs> Oh my gosh. If there's one thing a New York girl is gonna do, it's, it's New talk York. about the city that she currently pays rent in. Absolutely. And we got hot dogs outside of the club too in LA, okay? Oh yeah, we have hot dogs. <laughs> we, we had them outside in San Francisco. I think I saw them in Seattle. You're not special. The New York girls are always good on camera because they can fill time. In New York, the shows are a little bit different than everywhere else. It's usually one girl booked for one night and she entertains the audience the whole entire time. I have to say, when we went to New York, I saw why they cast so many New York girls on the show. How many New York girls do we have? Oh, aren't there like five or something? I think so. There's, um, well, Nymphie is living in- New York. New York, Dawn, Megami. Megami. Plasma. Ma. Oh, Muse, yeah. Is Dami Muse? Of yeah, course. okay, she's from New York. Muse. Okay, five girls. That was our season too. There were so many girls from New York. Name them. Okay, we have Redacted. <laughs> we Rita, have Jan, Rita, Jan, Jackie, Jackie. Nikki. Nikki, that was five. And then at the time, uh, so Dahlia was in LA, but she's from oh. New York, so it was like six girls. That was like half our fucking cast. So when the New York girls kept coming, I was like, woo, New York. <laughs> Great, I, I know. guess we know who we wanna win this season. I mean, they didn't. Uh-huh. The first thing I notice is that something just comes to mind. Plasma is the human personification of Glee. I've never even seen did you like it in the past season two. I did not like Glee. For so, you know why? I was in high school around that time. I was gay, Glee was coming out. The only way people could relate to me was, oh my God, you're gay, I love Glee. Like they were synonymous, like that was the two. Better that than be like, work girl, I love anal. <laughs> Fierce. And in high school. Glee, come on. It was edgy. It was edging. Have you, have you Edging been... and gooning, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I was gonna ask you if you have uh, been, <laughs> not been edging or gooning, but if you've been keeping up with all the gooning that's going around. Why are the kids gooning so much? I'm like worried, but also. Is it like ironic or like, cause I looked it up just for educational purposes. And um, there's a lot of people that goon. And I feel like that just takes so much time. Like to get, I feel like to get in the state of a goon. Yeah. Like I have to go do my dishes or something. Well, the girls have, uh, people have a lot of time. The girls here have plenty of time because they mentioned Goblin Cave. Oh my God, yeah. Which came up on Drag Race, which is wild. I've seen it. I've seen it too. I've seen it. We've all seen it. Why are there goblins? Fucking men. Because. Little goblins. Little goblins. This could have been one of the conversations where the producers are like, you know, like ask her about her hometown. Someone's like, Talk about Goblin Cave and then Goon. It was, I don't know. We also got um, Hershey. We got Hershey liqueur and she has two kids. Yes. She finally says it here and then everyone's like, aw, what if she lied? She did not lie. No, I, I know she didn't. But what if there was a contestant that was just like a huge liar? Yes. And they just compulsively lied, lied. the whole time. Someone who comes in and they're like, what do you do day to day? And they're like, well, I work for the Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders. So when I have free time, I take care of my five children. And also too, I'm a war veteran. Mm -hmm. So if you love America, you'll keep me. It's like the producers knew the whole time, but it's kind of like in um, Housewives of Salt Lake City right now with um, T, Reality Von Tees. Okay. Do you know about this? Tell me about it. Please educate me. There's a girl, Monica, on the new season of Salt Lake City. She creates a bully account to bully the women. She's acting, she's running it for what? four years. What? She gets what? herself cast on the show. <gasps> she makes the other women think that the call that it's one of the <gasps> <gasps> She's gaslighting them and oh my god, that's her storyline. That's okay. Yeah. Wait. So then, and then it all comes out last episode. Imagine this. I've created a bully account online. And I'm bullying all the Drag Race girls, so when I go to All Stars, I can be like, remember when I made you cry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what your weakness is. It's the opposite of what Trinity did. <laughs>
<laughs> speaking of speaking of Trinity the Tuck, um, me and Trinity and Heidi and Closet and Carmel are in a new movie called Slay. It's going to be on Tubi in March, so go get it. Are you really going to be on Tubi in a movie called Slay? <gasps> we kill vampires. We went through stunt training and everything. What? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Are we doing the compulsive lying? No, this is not okay, a bit. This, this is, is not, not a bit. bit. Put the disclaimer. This is not a bit. Slay. Slay. <laughs> Tubi. I'm so happy that you're working with Tubi because Tubi has such good shows. No, yeah, that's what it was like so fun to work with them. Okay, so Becky G walks into the workroom. Okay. I did not know who Becky G was. It's like I, I know the song, uh -huh. I just didn't have the face to go with it. Um, how did you feel about this interaction? Um, it's fun. We always get the girls to come in and say hi first. Mm -hmm. um, well, she's like an icon to Geneva Carr. No, that's the crazy thing is that Geneva is like, oh my God, love you girl. And then we'll Flop. find out later. <laughs> they were like, what are you looking for when you're judging? And she goes, representation. <laughs> oh, you're not looking to be entertained? I think she means like representation of you. Like, well, I wish she said uh, like, that. Like she wants to know at, at the end of the day, this is like your introduction. If you were judging these talent shows, what would you look for? One, if I was at a bar, what you're wearing, would I want to come over and talk to you? Like, oh, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Like, Are you visually striking? Am I going to like, does that speak to me? Yes or no? Like mm -hmm. is the performance, am I going to? Am I going to want to give you a dollar? Like, is it going to oh, spark yeah. a little fun in me? Am I going to want to get up close to that action? For this, for judging on Drag Race specifically, I'm only looking for one thing, which is to not have a horrible fucking song that you wrote yourself. I'm looking to see if you have taste. Because Mirage did the song and she did the talent and she was very captivating and everything. Um, but like, she has good taste. Yeah. So that I'm not saying that don't do your own original song. Just have the self-awareness that if your song is horrible, plan B. Plan B, girl. Do were there any bad songs? In the I don't last even episode? know what my talent would be. I don't have a single one. If you guys think. know what Crystal Method's talent would be if she ever comes back on All Stars, put it in the comments down below. Uh, and you can be as shady as you want too. Put it in the comments down below. I would love to do it. I'm actually pretty I could pick up skills pretty quickly they're so. like what is she talented at like give me a bunch of clothes and i'll style it in a cute interesting way i need michelle visage on stage and i'm gonna give her a makeover in 60 seconds she would never let that happen no no she would never <laughs> the girls are getting into face and some of them are getting to a point where like they're putting on enough makeup they're putting on just enough makeup to look like morphine in her confessionals mm -hmm. like because she has so much did you see the last episode she took off her face and then she put one back on no i love that yeah me too and i'm doing that next time the camera the, the news anchor he don't go up on the camera without makeup why am i expected to next up is the rue rune way what rue is oh, wait. wearing Oh, what Rue is wearing. Yeah. Do, what do you think of this outfit? I felt like I was having deja vu or something. Like, have we seen this before? Because I loved it so much. I was like, I've had to have seen this before. Like, it was so cute. Time for the talent show. Talent show, the Queen Amaze. What is it? The Queen Choice Awards. I like the Queen Amaze. <laughs> I kind of like. I kind of like that. It's the yeah, the Queen Choice Awards, like uh -huh. like Teen Choice Awards for those of you guys who were not around for that time. Just some wordplay and an excuse to have Derek back. Which Brittany, it's fine. I'm fine. If we get I it, love the return of Derek Barry. That brought me so much joy. I love it when they said, "Oops, I'm doing it again." We start off with Geneva Carr. And she does a number that is like La Diva Mas Latina. La Diva Mas Latina. And she's doing like um, this like Mexican Uh huh, like skirt. the ribbon dress. Yes. Um, what did you think of the number? For like the first number, it was a really good opening act. Yeah. Like, I thought it was really well placed in the show. It had good energy. Because um, it like was really visual in the beginning. She threw a little comedy in there. RuPaul loves it when you're going, aye. One thing that I really liked about hers was 
she had two elements to her storytelling. Mm -hmm. There's variety. There's peaks and yes. valleys. There's Dude. the split at the end. <laughs> that was just, that's a period. Uh -huh. That's just, you have to punctuate the end just a little bit. Did you like the song? I'm Geneva, Geneva, I'm Geneva, you know? That, that was I mean, three lines was, I'm Geneva. Okay, but you um, know what? We know her name. It was stuck in my head the day it came out. Like, it just aired and I was like, I'm Geneva, <laughs> Mother T. I, I liked the song and I, I have to say, I usually hate the songs that the girls come out with for talent shows on Drag Race. Mm -hmm. But this one I actually really liked and it really showed her character and it was fun. She had a line about a car running you over like geneva car's gonna run uh -huh. you over and i i did appreciate that but i was just like i could have we could have more lines like that yeah maybe like a couple more traffic innuendos or something yeah something like that mm -hmm. running red lights <laughs> red light mama and then like an old lady crosses and then you go okay let's go yeah <laughs> and then you have a pit crew member yeah walk by yeah and there you go just in trinity k bonet's stop guard outfit i forgot about that I forgot about that. I'll never forget. <laughs> Up next is Hershey Liqueur Jeté, getting giving us whiplash. Um, I think G Miss Geneva summed up perfectly. Like, great job. Why is she in the jungle? Well, yeah, great job. Why are you in the jungle? There were other questions that we had too. Like, why were the pants not cut? Yeah, make the sh make those shorts kind of <laughs> slutty. Whatever production was saying to the girls yeah hershey understood how to maximize the impact yeah or whatever it may have she been. said i know it's not part of my track but can i get a jungle i'm going to need to be in a <laughs> tropical rainforest Can't do or do you not have the sets <laughs> on hand so next up is plasma and so plasma is from new york. york and in new york that's where they take the new york subway and the New York subway is it where the- It takes you to the Broadway. Right, and then at Broadway, you do a show and you are a star. This was very New York. Yeah, and you also have to like have different gloves for all the different jobs you're doing. That's why she revealed them. They called her like a jack of all trades, the master of none. I feel like it was a fun, energetic, very Broadway talent that really showed off her character. Yeah, perfect for like a little cabaret show, yeah. variety act. She yeah. did, what did she do? She did burlesque, she did singing, she did impressions, and that that was it, just the three, right? Mm -hmm. But it was still really good. I would rather have her really show off just how Broadway she is like that than just lip syncing to a Broadway song. Honestly, one of the arguably like True talents. The impressions that she did were live too. Ooh, up next for our talent show is Nymphia Wind. Um, and this was- It's like a traditional- Clearly a top. Yeah. I, I feel like we've seen other like dances like inspired by our culture before, but this mm -hmm. one really drew me in. Mm -hmm. I, the mechanicals of that little bird on top was so interesting. I know, I, I kept looking at it, seeing how it was moving around mm -hmm. and staying on her head. And she was engaging every time it showed her face too. Like, mind you, she had like a mouth paint on her face, <laughs> but she has good stage presence. Mm -hmm. um, I This is my top one. This was my favorite of the talent show I wanna say me as well. Yeah, I'm always so um, tickled when the judges are wowed by multiculturalism. And it shows Ross and she goes, oh, they do things so different over there. That's what I think she's saying. She's like, oh, they're just like us. It kind of felt also Shen Yuni too. Oh my gosh, it felt very Shen Yuni. And like, honestly, I've never seen it, but my parents just went and were talking to me about that on the phone. Well, also Shen Yun is a cult. I have heard this. If you have gone down the Shen Yun rabbit hole, comment down below. I want to know more facts about it. Up next, we have the queen of flips herself. We have Maya and her set is not a jungle, it's a box. Ooh, bounce. <laughs> Bounce, yeah. Her track was Bounce, which was very cute. She, I have to say, she came out and I was like, this is a drag show. Cause she had like tassel drag she outfit. Had the dance costume down. She, she gave her little, look at me, I'm pretty. And then now let's do these tricks. She, I was, I was about to say, I was like, oh, I could do a lot of these. And then she did a full backflip and I was like, this is where it cuts off and I can't do this. <laughs> I thought it was, 
fun, but it's also one of those things where it's like, we've seen the dance number so much that how are you mm. going to make it a little bit different? Because like when, when Aja did it, like she did like a samurai thing where she cut her outfit and then she had an interesting outfit underneath it. And then, um, I mean, Lemon did it too. <laughs> okay, you cannot compare what we just saw to Lemon. Um, we... It was a lemon. What we know is that first week, it's talent show. This is her talent. She's a flipper. She's been flipping ever since she was a child. And I think we just had to like, take it at that. Do you think she's, do you think You know what I mean? She's... It wasn't, oh, it was definitely not a bottom placement. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you do that kind of stuff, it should not be a bottom placement. Yeah, you're at least safe. I did love the trick where she gets on her head <gasps> and then her legs in the air going like this, going fucking crazy. Yeah. I was living, I was living. I was in the club for the viewing party and I screamed so loud, so loud. I was ah! <laughs> What, bitch? <laughs> Up next, we're gonna slow it down a little. It's <laughs> This whole number to me, only reinforces the fact that I feel like Megami is a human Funko Pop in a sense that like she's well intentioned and is like cute, nice to have around, but like the choices are not there. There were so many things that were just wrong with it from the basis of like a person with taste doing drag. Like you never, don't do a sign. Don't hold a sign. If you can't portray a message to me with you lip syncing and performing and you have to use subtitles to tell me about it you're all you've already done your job wrong i kind of don't like text in my art either it's we're in a not text-based art form because i think People about it hate reading i think that maybe i mean luckily all the girls are doing everything and like what's great about a drag lineup is that you bring what you bring so yeah. like obviously she brings the emotional ballady things that's like what she loves to do but talent show don't know if that was the the, the place that, to pull it out yeah i understand like it's an emotional number but like did she have friends that helped her with this because like you have bad friends if they told you like can we get the win. jungle back up in here yeah can we number? get they said they're setting up for the next girl already while she's performing. Like that's what stuff. I would have said. I would have said, "Hey, while you're at it, while you're putting the easel up, can we get those trees? Yeah, please. Back in here. I and the easel out there just the whole time. I was like, I know the signs are coming. Something's gonna happen. It. And maybe it would have been fun if something maybe if something something Did unexpected happen. like a paint splatter. I don't know. I know, and it's like also a political number, but there was no oomph to it. I feel like we just lost um equal marriage rights in like two states after that number <laughs> you are being so mean i just think that it was like you know what sometimes you in the moment you can't make the right choice for yourself no i feel that there's just a lot of unfortunate things i don't like text in my drag and i don't like you opening up something and then it says like it says like your body's like fag queer <laughs> Oh my gosh, not the greatest showman in a ball gown covered in slurs. Yeah, um, exactly. Okay, next is Plain Jane. And she does burger, burger finger. finger. Burger finger. Da, da. And, and the interesting thing is that she divides the internet so much. So many people like what she does and says that it's original and she's Name them. Um, Quickly. I, the first thing I thought was like, oh, it's a Jimbo knockoff. Big titties to me doesn't just say Jimbo because I've spoken to Jimbo about this. Yeah. And you know, they've said like the wings, these are my wings. It's how I fly. Mm. You know, like that's how they're, they're expressing themselves in their truest form. Yeah. Whereas Burger Finger didn't give me authenticity. That's it. Is that Burger Finger felt like it was generated to get a specific reaction from RuPaul and it did. You know, it, to me, it felt very like, what's going to make RuPaul laugh? And well, like, I'm, I'm I, not going to do I don't it know if you time. know this. It is called RuPaul's Drag Race. No, I get it. <laughs> I fucking, I, I fucking get that you're supposed to make RuPaul laugh. That's great. But it's just, she didn't give off that character of like the eclectic weirdo in any situation that she was in before. Mm -hmm. And so having it there right then, just that's why it seemed disingenuine. But overall, did you like that number? Watching it the second time, I hated it less. So I watched it for the second time too just now, and I can hear the track. 
And I think I hate it less too. I think I hate it <clears throat> less than I did originally. Ketchup and mustard on the tits. Like, I don't know how I feel about it. Ooh. I kind of like, and like, it's it's kind of like for me, you know, like when you're at a drag show and a baby queen is like getting blood all over the stage and you're like, I'm about to go out there. You're like, oh, girl. I'm about to go out there on my outfit with my you nice, clean outfit. Like, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, you know what? But she kept it all on her boobs. Like, for I get sure. it. But I did think it was uh, at least entertaining. Yeah, that also the bodysuit that said burger, burger finger that was all latex and everything. Uh -huh. That was so nice. Oh, and the titties were in there really well. Uh-huh, because we had just seen really bad titties. Oh my gosh, I feel like the second episode, I was more entertained. Like, I kind of liked the queen's, like, I don't know, something about it. I, I enjoyed the episode a little bit more. But with talent show, I'm like trying to rank them in my mind and I'm like, I don't even know. I feel like I liked Nymphia's a lot. I feel like this talent show was different than the last one mm -hmm. because the last one, it felt like the the real standout was Q. And then here, everyone kind of like fell in this like kind of samey area. So it was a little bit more gray. I would say if I had to pick between the talent shows, I would rather watch the first episode just because Q's in it. I mean, if you guys prefer the first episode. Are you team episode one or episode so two? two. Because everyone at the club was like, girl, this episode was boring compared to one. Oh, really? Yeah, people were saying that at the club I was at. And I was just like, the whole episode I liked better because I liked the photo challenge. Maybe it's because there were so many Latinos. So I'm like... <clears throat> representation. Because <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm <laughs> That's always what you look I'm for. looking for representation in every episode. <laughs> Legal representation. Because I'm getting sued. <laughs> what was your favorite one out of all of these? Okay. Mine was say... Nymphia's. It would be either Nymphia or I guess if I had to place, I would place Plasma. Speaking uh -huh. of rating, we are on the season where the queens are rating each other now. Oh so before gosh. we get into our rating system, I'll have you rank yours. I'm going to do Nymphia, Plasma, Geneva. Oh, how many are there? Seven. Oh my gosh. Four. And then we have... Oh, no, no. Oh, wait, Queen no. of Flips. Queen of Flips. Queen of Flips. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Four. And then Plain and Jane. And then Plain Jane. And then... Hershey. Hershey. And then Megami. Oh, and then Megami. Yeah. Which is... I like I like the message. It just wasn't executed that well. Um, okay. But that's our rating system. If we were nice. If you were playing the game. What would you do? Well, I'll just do the same order, but I'll put Plain Jane last. And I'll probably put Plasma in third. Um, Even though I think she's a second. I kind of agree with your <laughs> ranking. I would move Geneva up because that's my girl. That's my sister. <laughs> my Latina must Latina. And then my I would... diva must Latina. <laughs> In case you guys are new here to the shit soup, we are at the point in our episode where we get to the runway. Yay! Runway is my favorite part. But we don't do it by a Tudor boot system. No, 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 no. We Wait, do things. Wait, I'm not on fashion photo review right now? No, I'm not Raven. Would you be Raven or Raja? I'm, I'm Raven Raja. Because I'm meaner. <laughs> I'm Raja. So the way that we rate things here is by random, stupid, uh, arbitrary things that really don't make any sense. So that being said, Crystal, today's runway is... We're going to say what kind of convention they're going to in their runway look. Perfect. Okay, so where are you heading to in your look right now? What convention oh, is right this? Right now, I'm headed to the single moms who are looking to adopt an alien child convention. You know what? I see that. What about this? Where do you think this is going? Okay, you're going to Hello Kitty Con. I'm definitely going to San Diego <laughs> Con, yeah. I think, I feel like ours are obvious theirs are not going to be so yeah. obvious definitely not okay nymphia wind nymphia for wind. this outfit is my favorite out of all of the queens put together for the two episodes okay yeah the hair looks like it's inflatable or something it has this really satisfying texture and like the brown tips at the end uh -huh. really just everything solidifies that 
She's a banana. Okay, let's go through the <laughs> outfits. The first one, which was almost like a, a Chinese lantern. So she was a green banana. I didn't get green banana. I felt like a yeah. pod. Yeah. She must use that for a different outfit because her dress didn't fit inside. Yeah, it was like coat. just barely coming out of the bottom. So, I mean, I can do away with that. But the first, the the actual garment that she's wearing. Underneath with the bananas, the details. The details, everything about it. Yeah, all the stuffed bananas. And so they're stuffed beautiful. bananas too. Yeah, there was like 80 bananas at least. You're just your poor friends like, what do you need me to do to help you for Drag Race? Can you make 80 bananas? <laughs> okay, the next outfit she revealed into was also very cute. It was like the, the ripe, like a little overripe banana. Mm -hmm. I loved that one. Her story could have ended here. I almost think it should have ended there because what? sometimes I don't like it when people just are naked. I mean, I will excuse them being naked. But, I, but for here, it's fine. But, yeah. I, but the other one was so cute. Like it would have been great to end on that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I love that she finished it off mm -hmm. because it was that extra bit of subversion for me, that attention to detail, that stupidness. I love it. We were like, how are they so gooey? Yeah, the leathery, <laughs> the nipples, the banana nipples look like rotten bananas. So like, what is that texture? What kind of convention is she heading to? Um, they're going to a convention for just organic produce. I feel like this could be a Like convention. more of a farmer's market. Or it could be a mascot convention for mm. bananas. And this is the girl auditioning to replace Chiquita Banana. Okay. You know? She's like Chiquita's like good Judy yeah, from across the way. Good Judy. She's the exchange student for Chiquita Banana. I feel like it's a farmer's convention. Where is it being held? Oh, somewhere tropical. Like, Wait, why? Why? <laughs> because they're tired of the farm. They want Oh, beach. so they have to get away. They want to go to the beach. Okay, so the convention is in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the convention, but then she's serving like um, frozen <laughs> bananas. To the people. To the people because they're hot. Because yeah. they're at a tropical climate. That's the answer. For me, like, I get that the way that we did reveals was a big coat to an outfit. I understand that. But I feel like it's like, I don't know, that big coat's gonna come off and something's gonna be even it. Even if we know the coat's gonna come off, we need to see you in the coat to be able to just so walk mentally to prepare to see you in a dress underneath. So I just needed a little bit more of the coat. I barely even saw it. It was lined in gold. Yeah, it was pretty. I would have loved to see that a little maybe closer. And I wish that she had really showcased that she would still look good in the coat. Uh -huh. Like she's still like opulent and decadent in it. That being said, I, I wasn't too big of a fan of the reveal of how fast it was. It wasn't really milked. But do you like this dress? That she I like the dress on her. Me too. I like the dress on her. If I was her, she, I would have had a detox style butt cut out in the back and I would have pulled out like a piece of chocolate from my booty. Chocolate coming out of the butt can be sexy. If it's in a wrapper. Maybe and it is. Not Maybe I shoved a fully wrapped Snickers up there and I pull it and then I open it. Yeah. So speaking convention, she's oh. going to a candy convention. Well, here's what I think. Because of the glasses, because of the updo, I'm really getting like teachers convention that's also an S&M event. So it's for teachers. I get that. For teachers who want to be naughty later. Right? Yes. And she had to cover oh up. Oh my gosh, it's an after hours dominatrix convention and she is by day a teacher and yeah. by night a sex worker. And she, the whole time she was in the class, she had the coat on. And she turns up the AC in the classroom. What just class so that, is she teaching in that coat? I feel like it would be sexy to be like biology. You cannot get around <laughs> those test tubes with those sleeves. The Bunsen burners. Yeah, there's no, no pottery, no painting, <laughs> no cooking. Uh, Just, maybe English? Okay, yeah. English teachers for sure wear glasses. Too. Yeah, so she's a sexy English mm -hmm. teacher going to... Uh, Ladies of the Night convention. Ladies of the Night convention. You know what? <laughs> That's kind of pussy. Mm -hmm. I'm really down for that. All righty, up next, I hope that you're not gay so you can donate your blood. It's <gasps> plasma. 
<laughs> Comedy queen! <laughs> I like the outfit. I like the reveal. Okay. Um, I like that she tried to throw in a couple extra reveals in there. Yeah. Um, I don't love the pants, so I loved it when they came off. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really cute. The hair, like, is really, hairs really well with it. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I want, like, yellow dots on her face? I don't know. Like extra buttons or something like that. So I like this outfit. I do think the pants feel a little bit like, um, Marshalls. The way that, just the way that they're sewn. But I do appreciate all of the other details that are mm -hmm. in the outfit. I love the pins in the hair. I love the- Oh my gosh, um, it's giving me like our buttons and bows. Yeah, exactly. Like really cute. Like there's little details <gasps> that- she should, put, she should pull a pin out of her butthole. Is your talent pulling stuff out of your ass? Maybe is that what you're going to do? And it's like Crystal's magic oh show? Oh my gosh. That being said, where is she heading to? Because mind you, she was a giant tomato first. She was a giant tomato with needles in it. Then she had a shirt and pants and then her nipples were out with tassels. But then her nipples were out. <laughs> so where is she heading to? Besides a fruit New York. convention. Oh, she's going to, I mean, a quilting convention. Wait, so she's her, heading to the quilting convention. She's talking about her grandma. She loves old women. Okay, but she's not an old woman that quilts that's going to the convention. She's a young yeah. admirer of older women. And she's like, I want to entertain no, them. She's working in the booth where they're selling the tomatoes. Yeah, and she's selling it by taking it off for the grandmas. That, this is the out that she takes that off. She goes through, she does her demonstration on how to use the, <laughs> the machine correctly. Like when they're doing the peeling of the potato. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, I can see that. It's like but next to the But then it's like, you know, seller. to get the husbands interested so that the wives can stay longer, you got to do a Janet Jackson. And exactly. How are you going to keep the other people coming back to the convention and buying the tickets? Mm -hmm. You got to add that extra bit of sex to it. Mm -hmm. You got to something for the grandmas and something for the dads. Yeah. <laughs> um, next, we have Maya. She is the queen of flips and she is from Florida. And I have to say, this is the fastest that I've played the video and paused it to get to the final look. She had a jacket for when it's cold and a swimsuit. Two gloves off immediately. Yeah, done. She's like, I'm fucking hot. She's like an actual drag queen when they're done with the game. No, literally. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> but like, I wish I would have been able to see any kind of detail of that coat. The look, the print is so like wild and crazy. I would have loved to see the coat, like kind of tie it all together. I feel like maybe I'm not understanding the story because I don't know the full. Well, her story is that she has a jacket when it's cold, but then it's hot, so I take off uh -huh. my jacket. Well, how do you feel about the corn cob buns? Um, I like the silhouette, actually. I think it looks good on her. Also, she chose a pretty good tone of yellow for mm -hmm. the hair. I have to say, like, it's not, like, hard mustard yellow. Um, I... Uh, there are a lot of elements to this that I like, but just like you said, I wish I had been able to enjoy the other sections more. Yeah, wear the coat all the way down, take your glove off on one side, like toss it around, throw it at Rue. Yeah, know, I don't know. maybe it's a critique on global warming and that it wasn't it's cold too for very hot. long. It's getting too hot. Yeah, this was the political number of the episode that we internalized. And we didn't even need a sign. <laughs> okay. Uh, where is she going? You know what this is? Like a con like a like a church goer convention, and then she's off by the pool, and this is what she's wearing. So it's still got church clothes vibes. Her husband is preaching. Yes, and she's like, "Ugh, I'm over it. I've seen him do this a million times. Yeah, I don't need to go to his away. panel. I don't have the kids. Yeah. So she goes to the convention with him because he's speaking at the preaching." panel mm -hmm. but she's over by the beach so they're no they're, so that means the hotel is paid for so she can use the luxuries she's doing the spa she's doing the oh yeah set. she's and she can't wait to do them uh -huh. so that's why she gets that's into the she, room because you have to you have to get your robe off yeah you gotta get naked get, so that they can get the, the problem area they say and your gloves too ma'am and she goes i'm already there <laughs> <laughs> so a church convention well, that is such an interesting choice pool. for this. I did not see that coming, but it somehow... It somehow works. It works. Think about it at home. I mean, now I can't see anything else. Queen Geneva, it's a reveal, not a take things off, off kind, kind of, of gig. gig. I love her. Um, I do love that. I love that there was nothing left behind. Um, 
but the girls are, they're busting their loads too fast. But what I like about it, yeah, the reveal, the him and hers, but it just, the reveal happened too early. Like I wanted to watch a little bit more of the mariachi outfit and mm -hmm. then maybe like even throw in a hat. Throw in oh, a hat, yeah. cover the hair. But yeah, I guess a kind of convention they could be going to, um, definitely a Disney convention. This was Disney gay coded <laughs> so hard. Do you know what I'm saying? This is <laughs> the Encanto. The Encanto just came uh, out and I finally have a Disney princess for me. I feel like this is like a Disney convention that's like in Pasadena away from everything and it's unofficial. And yeah. she's going to the Encanto meet and greet, but she's coming from work, which is she works as a mariachi. mariachi. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you said that that was Disney gay coded and now that's all I can think of. I know exactly how to make this fit the bill instantly. I'm not even gonna change anything but one thing. What would you change on Megami? She should have worn a white leotard underneath. Uh-huh. And then she's dark, mysterious, but then she's like- Completely she's, angelic. Then she like drops the black veil and she's set free or whatever, or, you know what I mean? So her narrative could have been going from a biblically accurate angel to being like a cur current depiction of uh -huh. an angel. That would have been actually really interesting. Yeah, really sickening. Cause what all the judges wanted was for there to be less clothes on at the end. Yes. And like, I like the garment. I like that there's a lot happening. This is the cosplay part of them coming out. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things I like about it. I I just wish, I, I obviously I just wish there was a better reveal. Mm -hmm. And for me, something about the top portion with the shoulders doesn't make sense. It makes her look extra boxy. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. All you have to do, she clearly, ha I, I think she has a black bodysuit underneath. Uh -huh. Throw on a white bodysuit, throw on a white corset, boom. Yeah, just. And then and then you can be like, oh, silhouette. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. You like this I, look. out of the runways, like I know it hardly fits the bill, but that's the art student in me coming in. It's like. No, I can feel that. I, I don't like this look. I feel like some of the proportions are odd, but I do like the amalgamous blob sort of silhouette. I'm totally mm -hmm. fine with that. Like amalgamous blob and then wing, wing, wing. Totally cool the with that. The gold paint, you know, there's fun, fun moments. Where is she going? Where is she going? She's going to a Magic the Gathering <gasps> convention. Oh. Because I swear you could see a monster card that looks like that. I mean, yeah, for sure. This is definitely a cosplay to like a uh, Magic the Gathering thing. Is mm -hmm. she? But you know what's sickening is that um, she's actually like one of the top Magic the Gathering players in the nation. Oh. And, and her her gig <clears throat> is that, is that she, she, she dresses she up. She dresses up so insane. While she's as, as a creature from her deck. I was going to say that she's going to... Um, she's going to an anime convention, but not as a goer. And she's outside protesting it because she's all she's she's all about the she's protesting like, too. She has a sign. God hates facts. Uh -huh. I don't know why that it's giving that for me, which is completely the opposite of what her number was. But for some reason, that's how it's reading to me. OK, um, plain Jane's runway. I she she milked the first outfit. She walked down just like you said and showed us the outfit. She did what you wanted, Crystal. She did Crystal. exactly what I wanted and I wish that she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the Romanoff look and stuff. Um, do you think that the turn was too sharp? I think that it had nothing to do with it. Like, uh, I, I get that maybe this is like your heritage and where you are now today. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can see that. Mm -hmm. But visually, as just an audience member, it's a mm -hmm. bit jarring. It doesn't really, it doesn't, it doesn't work for sit you. well with my heart. I like it because I think that she's playing off of the expectation that she's going to follow a narrative with the Russian look. So it's extra meta where she's like, but you'd never think that I would reveal into this. Yeah, it's like, sure, do something totally off the, off like, imagine cuff, if Geneva Carr took off the mariachi thing and she was just fully erect. 
with nothing there. Like that would be that would be a reveal. I don't know. Be it's so just surprised. like the denim shorts and the little top. I'm like, I don't know. With just like a flat human hair wig. I'm like, oh my D God. That's Jan. <gasps> that is not Jan. <laughs> where is she going? What's that show where you see how much your antiques are worth? Antiques Roadshow. That's the first one that she went to was the at the convention center. She had when you have Antiques Roadshow, but you have to check a car the show game outside. After. Yeah, there's a car show outside. Uh -huh. So she goes to Antique Roadshow, and then she's like, "Oh yeah, the road." And she runs a food truck called Bean Town. So she went from the convention to working at the convention. Yeah, it looks like she works in a parking lot. <laughs> You're right. I, I feel that. Okay, Antiques Roadshow. What did she bring? He brought some kind of just like strange, one of those oil fountains, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Who brings the just oil? Just kind of like, there's no use for it anymore. Yeah, but then they're like, eight million dollars. Oh my God, but then they're like, oh my God, we put our lube on it. And we goon for hours. I just cannot stop. <laughs> goon with the wind, did you see that? <laughs> Someone said goon girl. All right, so that was our runway, especially stupid. Do you feel like going to a convention now? Have you ever been to a furry convention before? Um, I have not, but I have wanted to go. We should go to one in San Jose. That's the one I'm talking about. There was a furry convention and then every every year for some reason- Everyone was pooping their diapers. They were, yes, but <laughs> they would share the convention hall with high school or middle school girls that were at a volleyball meet. So these girls would come every year and then just like furries in fursuits walking down the street. And it's it was wild. All right, the queens have just raided each other and we are gonna give our opinions on how they raided themselves. There are girls that are playing the game. There are girls who are very honest. Like that, that mindset of being on Drag Race and not wanting to upset the fans is real. This rating system that's different than the other one is playing James in this one. Uh -huh. She said before she was going to be rating how she thinks is fair. And the fairest way she thinks is to play the game. She flips it and she puts like she puts it in reverse order. She puts the ones in the bottom at the top. But the gag for me is that she thought plasma, plasma was, was the, the worst. worst. Well, she also said she's like her makeup was fucking atrocious, which is just like what? She's, that not, wasn't, she's not here. That was uncalled for. First of all, that's not what we were critiquing in this moment. Yeah, we didn't see what she put after that, but the fact that she didn't put Megami sixth or fifth was crazy to me. Mm -hmm. That was the craziest part to me. But I think like she put her in the middle just because she didn't remember what happened. She didn't have a, an insult for her that she didn't already say. <laughs> um, how do you feel about everyone else voting? I was a little surprised. At like who they thought was doing at well. Who like, the other girls thought was doing well. I was like, you put playing Jane at number one? I was like, that makes no sense. Over Nymphia? Over, over Nymphia, over Plasma. Here's the thing. I don't think they're as intimidated by playing Jane as they are by Nymphia's good drag. So this was an excuse to put her sure. a lower. little lower. Yeah. Do you think that the voting was fair, unfair? Did you like the outcome? I mean, who cares about fairness? It was fine. It is what it is. Someone's going to go home at the end of the day. Actually, they're not. <laughs> no going home. Like, so honestly, it's like, who really cares? What what, what I care about is that um, in the next episode, we're all going to find out that all the girls are pissed at Jane. And Is it because like we get to see the voting next week or of something? Of course they're going to show us. I'm so excited for that. Of course Expose they're going to show us. The, bitches. the girls have raided each other. Everything is locked in. We are at our lip sync and our two competitors that are top two. Well, obviously no one's going home. Our two competitors that are top two are Plain Jane and Geneva Carr. Do you agree with both of these placements? La Diva Mas Latina. I think that clearly Nymphia would have been in the top spot if she hadn't been placed six. Yes. And so all the other girls were also loving Geneva too. Oh my gosh, so it would have been Geneva and Nymphia? Yeah. You think? I, if I had a no, top two- No, 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 two, I don't know. I think. If I had a top two, it would be Plasma and Nymphia because I liked both of their talents and their runways together. Mm -hmm. In my version, where it's a white person and a person from Taiwan doing Becky G's song. Singing in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that would have been better. I would have liked that. I would have loved to see um, how both of them move. I think that Plasma would have been really camp. She would have been acting like she was showering. Because she can 
at New York. And she goes, oh, you thought there was a shower here. Uh. <laughs> All I'm saying though, you're going up, you're doing shower, you're backstage. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm grabbing three water bottles, I'm stuffing my outfit. And I'm gonna sing in the shower. Exactly. Hello. Yeah. People are so afraid to get wet. Here's the thing. If you get on Drag Race, don't ask for permission. Ask for forgiveness. Yeah. That's the mantra that everybody no. has. If you're if you're lip syncing, you're not mic'd. So you're not gonna like get electrocuted or anything. So you'll be fine. The only thing is do it in the corner where no one's gonna, where the girl's not gonna slip. Yeah. So production, you go, can I have a tarp? Yeah. yeah can you put one down? Do just you have here? a kiddie pool in the back? Yeah. <laughs> What do we have? I'll clean up after my number, I swear. <laughs> and then the next girl goes up and she slips. So we're at the lip sync right now. We're gonna talk about it in a second. Okay. But if you wanna see Crystal and I react to the lip sync, it's gonna be on my Patreon. And if you'd like to become a patron on Patreon, there's a link in the description below and you can help support this channel. This lip sync for me, I love the song. I didn't know it was Becky G. I mean, truth be told, I was doing the viewing party and I was like, the thing was playing, I was like Googling her. And then I was like, oh, okay, that song. <laughs> and so, this song came on and like everyone knows this song. It's bright, it's poppy. It's definitely like express yourself sort of thing. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna be who I am regardless of who's there. And I feel like neither of them did that. I really enjoyed the song, mm -hmm. but I thought the lip sync was okay. I feel like Jane won because she was able to improv it better and have more peaks and valleys. And yeah. Geneva Carr just like played Upwards. I agree with the peaks and valleys mm -hmm. for sure. But then I'm like, did we not watch Geneva Carr go like, do, 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 do. Was she nervous to go to lip sync the song in front of her idol? You know, it kind of felt like there was trepidation in it. Like she was too nervous. But here's the thing, bitch, you won top two. You should be happy. Yeah. You should be real happy. When we lip synced on our episode after that one, Jada was like, Bitch, I'm just happy I'm not going home. It's a high kick, <laughs> jump split. You know? <laughs> well, it's funny because like, this was your moment. It was and your I moment. Wanted you to, I wanted you to have it. Everything was set up for you. You know what, Geneva? You are still my diva, Mas Latina. You'll always have that. I mean, I'm serious. I love it. When the song was good, we liked it. It's just, come on. That was the one. We wanted you to kill Plain Jane. So, cause like we were talking about villains earlier and how like we want people to like, the villains to get to this level and then beat uh -huh. them. But we're an alternate timeline. Yeah. We're in the timeline in The Legend of Zelda where Ganon won. And now the world's that been flooded. That is what just happened. Yeah, exactly. What is the world like in the world where um, Geneva Carr won? Oh, just like free healthcare. We'll never have it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was our episode. Crystal, how did you feel about the whole episode? Oh my gosh, well, you know what? I'm excited because although we clearly favor Nymphia, mm -hmm. other than that, like, I feel like I don't have a clear front runner. I don't have a good idea. Mm -hmm. Like once the two groups mesh, it's gonna be pure chaos. And I'm yes. kind of excited to see how it goes. I'm curious if they keep the Raid of Queen or if that's just out yeah. the window. What is the immunity? They were being so vague. Like, you know, I'm excited to get going. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm ex this is a season where you're just so excited. I'm so excited because I didn't have any spoilers and I don't know how anything is going to work. Yeah. So this is how production wanted the show to be told to people because we're always on the other side, right? Like someone always just says, she makes top four. <laughs> I'll beat the shit out of you. You ever do that shit? I'm gonna beat you up. Did you like this episode better or the last one better? I think I think overall the elements having TS and RuPaul right there in the DMV and mm -hmm. the kind of switch up of the talent show a little bit. I, I kind of like the second episode. I like this one too because the elements that were missing from the first one were a villain. Mm -hmm. um, and RuPaul and T.S. Madison during the photo challenge. Oh my gosh, maybe this would be an interesting Untucked to watch because the first one, everyone was just like, we love each other. And then this one, Plain Jane's like, you should drink bleach. <laughs> 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 Crystal, thank you so much for joining me on the shit soup. I have to say that Crystal and I live in the same city. I'm so happy that she actually wants to come on our channel. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just happy that you want to film this video. Yeah, I love being here. 
where can we find you? What are hey, you up to? Hey, y'all. I'm going on a one-woman show, <gasps> a spellbinding solo show, Crystal Method Inside the Enchanted Forest. So join me on the adventure of a lifetime. It's um, Tickets are available at crystalmethod.com. Right now, I'm only going to seven cities, so go check it out. Find out if I'm coming to a city near you. But mm -hmm. um, if I'm not, leave the city you want me to go to in the comments, and um, I'll make it happen because we're going to do it again, and it's going to be even bigger and badder. If you guys sell out, Crystal's show, like you sell it out, there's probably gonna be more incentive to bring it to a town nearer to you. If you support Crystal, she can support other people who wanna support her. You know what I'm saying? Go get the ticket to the oh, show. Oh yeah, go get the go ticket get, to the show. I got some merch at mybestjudymerch.com. Oh. I've only got like 200 more pairs of my fabulous socks. I guess I'll have to get a pair of beautiful Crystal Method socks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you guys so much for joining us for this week's episode of The Shit Soup. Leave it down in the comment below. Are you team plain Jane is making it interesting because she's a villain and she's pretty? <laughs> or do you feel like you don't like her? Cause she's just, she looks like she would say something problematic. Is that, are you, why are you pointing your burger finger at me? <gasps> <laughs> Wait, that doesn't <laughs> smell like a burger. <laughs> Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want more content just like this. A special thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. You guys helped make this video possible. Earlier this month, you guys were able to help me buy a new setup for my camera. And we're gonna be paying for new editors since Cash is on vacation. Thank you guys for being so patient with our uploading schedule. Uh, I know it's a little bit difficult without Cash, but you guys are always here supporting us. So thank you so much. And then we're oh my gosh, say, you're doing your own, your own one woman show over here. Oh my God, it's, <laughs> it's just, I'm gonna be doing this in one city, this one. And I guess we'll just have to say, Talk you later. Talk you later. Bye. Bye. So did you write anything for your show yet? I have some things. <laughs>